Right, the Frederick, you brought me to what looks like a pretty shallow lake. Um, what's the sort of average depth here? I would say around 70 centimeters. Right. Uh, right now we're at an all-time low, so we're about 25 centimeters lower. Right. So it's even even more shallow than that. Right. So it is really shallow. Now, is it silty or is it gin clear? What's it like? I would say, uh, depending on what kind of wind situ situation you have. Yeah. Uh, like today, we have pretty calm, yeah. so it will be pretty pretty clear. Right. Um, I think. Is there a lot of snags? Are there reed beds? And I can see yeah, from here there's reeds, yeah, but any other sort of weeds. weeds and things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a lot of vegetation on the bottom. Right. And a lot of sedimentation as well. Right. And there's lily pads and things like yeah, that. Yeah, lots well. of lilies everywhere. And tell me, do you find the, tr the pike in amongst the lily pads and around the reeds, or are they in open water mainly? I would say you mainly find the smaller pikes just uh, beneath the lily beds. Right. Like up to two, three pounds, I would guess. Right. Uh, and then the bigger ones tends to be be out on the on the more open water, close to the to yes. the weed islands. Whoa, what a lovely take! What sort of food are they feeding on? What other fish are here? Uh, mainly rudd, yeah, uh, the roach, you got the bream, uh, and the bigger pike uh, mostly feed on the smaller pike as well. Yeah, so there's plenty to feed on. Yeah, lots of food, lots of coarse fish. So what are you going to use to start off with? Well, I'm a traditional jerkbait fisherman, right. uh, so I'm having a pretty pretty stiff rod, uh, braided line, uh, and an American muscular. Uh, now this one is a sinking one, but I like using it because I uh, right now we have a pretty warm water, Yeah. so I like to retrieve it really, really fast. Right. So you need a lure that still stays under the surface. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. Right, I'm going to do the opposite. Yeah, you're going be down, the I'm going to fish a little surface lure like this, and uh, I'm just going to cast it and to jig it and play with it and see if I can bring some fish up, especially around the lily pads and things yeah. like that. So, you know, they do take quite a few small fish, but big fish do hit them as well. Yeah. So, And it's great because everything's visual with these. So if you fish that, I'll fish this, see yeah. how we get on. Sounds good. Good stuff. Just fishing this surface lure. It's bright red, a little bit of black on it as well. And I'm trying to work it through the surface just by keeping the rod up bouncing the lure almost over the top of the ripples and then sometimes because of the shape of it it dives into the ripples and sometimes you can just leave it completely still and they'll nail it but it's so exciting because everything is visual so every single cast once you start to get some hits every cast you're expecting a splash or a whack and when they're taking it there's no half measures like we get in England they are absolutely nailing it completely I've debarbed all the hooks on there. In fact, I'm thinking tomorrow I'll probably even put a single hook on rather than a treble because they hook just as well. Yes! Glad I had that last cast. Whoa, that looks a better fish. Today we're on Lake Van Ern, which is a massive expanse of fresh water. I'm here again with Frederick, who guided me yesterday, but this is a different sort of guiding altogether. We've got a big 100 horsepower engine, big boat, bigger lures, big expanse of water. Tell us a little bit about Van Ern. Well, we got an average depth around 40 meters. That's totally not where we're fishing today. We're right. fishing a big, big stone reef yeah. uh, with steep edges. Yeah. So what, what we could do is you could start fishing early morning fishing on top of the reef and then just moving way down as the fish moving along the along the edges. How big is this place? So I would say about about 100 miles. 100 we, miles yeah, long? We got 22,000 islands. <laughs> Crikey, 22,000. I've got to admit this morning when we came out it was daunting because it was just like going out to sea. It's just like being in Auckland Harbour. Yeah, a massive um, amount of water. But you brought us straight to a reef and got us over some shallow water yeah. Which was what, less than two meters deep? Yeah, I would reckon around one meter even. Yeah, one meter deep. And suddenly, because when you're fishing with a professional guide who knows what he's doing, suddenly, even though it's huge, 
you start to feel at home and start to feel quite confident. And in fact, after about three casts, I had a swirl at a yeah, straight away. Just by the boat. Right by the boat. And from that second onwards, confidence came. Yeah. That's all you need. And so we fished different patterns, didn't we? I did pretty much the same as yesterday and used Martin's surface lure, which yeah, worked for popper, me yesterday. Yeah. yeah, and that really worked well. But this at home would be the sort of lure size that we'd use. Yeah. But what I have noticed is yours are so much bigger. Yeah. What we have here in Lake Vandern is that the pike is feeding on really big, big prey. Right. They're feeding on big breams, yeah. big roaches, yeah. big whitefish as well. Yeah. So what, what I'm like like to use is like big baits that are moving a lot of water, making a lot of noise down the water. Yeah, yeah, I noticed um, that. If I put this one, yeah, you see the difference. That. It's unbelievable, isn't yeah. it? And uh, and you've had some strikes on that today. Um, but what has happened, strangely enough, is that surface law seems to have pulled some fish yeah. again. So probably had about seven strikes. Caught a nice um, pike getting on for about double figures. But then later on in the morning, caught my first ever asp. Yeah. That was a good hit. Don't think it's huge, but hit it nicely. Oh, it's a huge asp. I've never caught one in my life. It's like a tarpon. What a wonderful fish. Job. Frederick, thank you, mate. My first ever asp. Now that's a wonderful fish. Now tell me a little bit more about asp. So what we have here, we have the River Tidan running down to yeah. Vänern here in, in close to Maristad, uh, and the fish is moving up Tidan to spawn yeah. during April, uh, and then they're moving back out to the shallower areas just outside Maristad. Right. So you'll have them up on the reef hunting. You'll see them sometimes splashing in the surface. Right. So they eat fish. Yeah, they eat fish. They're predatorial right. fish. Whoa! That one jumped right out the water to take that. Came out <laughs> head first and went back in head first. That's a big fish. Wow, that's a big fish, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Good job. And uh, the fish I caught, how heavy would you say that was? I would say around 3.5 kilos. Right, so it's a good fish. About 10 pounds, something like that? Yeah, close to 10 pounds, yeah. We say in real money. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a beautiful fish, and it reminded me a little bit of a tarpon, but without the long, elongated uh, ray on its dorsal yeah. fin. But full, beautiful of, full of muscles. Ah, fantastic. I'd love to catch some more of those. But then you come out here and you're fishing for pike and you get a bonus fish like that. Do they shoal up as well? So is there a chance of catching more? Yeah, you definitely. One? If you catch one, you should just keep in the area, keep fishing, and there will be more there. That was fantastic. It's been a brilliant morning fishing. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. Doing. We've got a little bit of cloud as well, so with a bit of luck, they might carry yeah. on feeding. Keep on fishing. Absolutely.